Hey church, I hope you're doing well. So let me ask you, how's your rep? How's your reputation? What are you known for? If I were to ask people in your life who had interactions with you about you, what would they say? What would they tell me about? What would be the things that, that stood out? What would they point to as who you are? As what you, you're hanging on to, as what you've done, as what's important to you? How is your, your rep, your reputation? For me, if you were to ask people who had interactions with me, I imagine that it would depend a little bit upon who you asked, right? If you ask people that were in the churches that I serve, they would say, well, that's, that's Pastor Chris. That's part of his identity. He is a, a pastor. And they, they wouldn't be wrong. That's my profession. That's my calling. I, I serve as a pastor. And so I'm known for that within a certain circle. If you went to another circle of people and you asked them, well, what's that guy known for? They might tell you, well, he's Silas's dad. Uh, that's who he is. Th that's what he does. He's the father of Silas. In another context, they might say, well, that, that's Krista's husband. That's, that's who he is. That's what he does. He's, he's Krista's husband. That's what I would be known for. If you happen to stroll into like uh, the gym on a particular day and you saw somebody that happened to recognize me in that place, which not everybody would, but if you happen to see one of those folks, they say, well, what's that guy known for? They might tell you, he's known for sweating like crazy and just going through t-shirts and playing racquetball. That's all he does, plays racquetball and sweats. That's what he's known for there. And they wouldn't be wrong. That's what I do in the gym. I'm known for different things in different contexts because my roles are different. Uh, the, the hat that I wear in each situation is a little different. Uh, people know me in different ways depending upon who you ask and where you are. And that's okay. But I, I'm trying to get at something deeper. You see, I'm asking, what are you known for beyond your roles or your abilities or your hobbies? What are those things that you're known for, for carrying into each environment? How do people see you on a deeper level? And for me, I hope that, that a thing that transcends all of this stuff, that, that a thing that comes out in every context is that I would be known for being a disciple that I would be known for being a follower of Christ, that I would be known as one who has been chosen by God, one who has been set free from the sin and the, the shame that has held me back, and one who is, is called by Christ to follow him. And that as I follow the Lord, I'm known for being a disciple no matter where the Lord leads. And I hope that that's the same for you, that, that you've come into this relationship with Christ, that you want to be a disciple and that you want to be known for that, no matter where God leads. Now, it's one thing to say, I want to be known for being a disciple. But when the rubber meets the road, what does that really mean? And, and to answer that question, we need to know what a disciple is in the first place. We need to look at what it means to be a disciple and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And so that's what we're doing. We, we're spending a little time, and we've done this for a couple weeks, where we're looking at what does it mean to be a disciple? And how does that translate into my life? How can I be known for being a disciple no matter where I go in life? That others would see Jesus in me. That they would know that I'm following after the Lord. That I've been touched by God and that that's available for them as well. And so today, that's what we're looking at a little bit more. What does it mean to be a disciple? And how might we carry that wherever we go? So far, we, we've looked at how a disciple is one who's filled with the Holy Spirit, who the very presence of God not only resides in our heart, but is overflowing through us so that, that we're like spilling over all of the time the presence of God in our lives. And, and that's a key to being disciple disciples of Christ. And, and, and on top of that, it's not just that we're filled with the Spirit, but that we're filled with the Spirit towards some things. Uh, Peter taught us how we're filled with the Spirit towards sanctification, towards being more holy, towards being like Jesus. So we're moving in our lives towards Jesus. Peter also said that, that we were filled with the Spirit because we've been called. We've been chosen that our, our walk with the Lord isn't accidental, but that God has called our name. And so we can walk with this sense of confidence, knowing that we've been 
picked by God and that we've been filled with the Spirit for obedience, that we recognize that the gift of the Spirit came through the great cost of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so we want to obey the Father. We, we want to live lives of obedience. We know that these things incorporate what it means to be a disciple, that this is part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, that we're filled, that we're overflowing with the Spirit for obedience, uh, for sanctification, and so that we know that we're called, so that we have a sense of I, our identity. And today we're going to look at another feature that comes as we follow Jesus, another thing that we're called to do, another part of our discipleship. And this, today we're going to stay in uh, Peter, in First Peter chapter 1, but we're going to start in 22, and we're going to see a little extra bit about what discipleship means and how we might carry that into our day-to-day -day life, how we might uh, walk in discipleship with others. Now that, you have been, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. This is 1 Peter 1, verse 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. Peter says it's not enough just, you know, to be filled, to have love for God, to walk in obedience, but, but we're also called into relationship. We're called into how we might act with other people. And the key here is we're to love from the heart sincerely, completely, so that no matter what context we find ourselves in, we would be marked by love. Our reputation would be bound up in love, so that as we're ordering that chimichanga at the Mexican restaurant that we're known for in that place, uh, somebody would say, wow, that guy is, is kind. That guy is loving. That, that guy cares. As we interact with our family around the table, we, we would interact in a way that's loving. And we would be known by our love. As we sweat profusely on the racquetball court, we wouldn't act in a way that is unloving, but even in being competitive, they would, people would say, that guy shows love, shows kindness, shows compassion. And here's how Peter continues. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. He wants us to be defined by love, to be known, known by love, not just because it's some easy sentiment, not be, just because it's some trendy thing to do, but it's because we've been born again by that which is imperishable, that which lasts forever. Uh, faith, hope, and love of these, the one remains love. And, and so this should be a marker of our life, that we love one another just as Christ has loved us, that we love one another beyond a measurable ability, that we love one another in a way that's tangible, that's real, that, that when people would describe us, they would say, that person loved like nobody else. That person loves like I've never seen before. That person loves beyond their ability, beyond what's reasonable in their human capabilities. And we know that that happens by the gift of God, that we've been born again of the Spirit, and that the Spirit enables us to love. This isn't just a, a turning of a blind eye kind of love. It's, it's still in the context of walking in obedience, of, of living our lives to Christ, of being sanctified in the Spirit. But it's important that we have this love as well. Friend, I don't know all the things that you are known for. I don't know uh, if you bake the world's best brownies and you're known for that. If you are, you can send some to me. I'll, I'll 
try them and give you another opinion. I don't know if you're known for your skills at your job or your athletic abilities. I don't know, know if you're known for your family or your friends. I don't know the things that define you. But I hope and I pray that as you seek Jesus, as you follow the Lord, no matter what context you walk into, that you might be known by your love. That you might be known by the love of God flowing through you, pouring out of your heart, so that others might know that love from Jesus as well. For God's sake and glory. Amen.